Number 29. A device for exercising the upper leg muscle is shown in figure 9.38, together with a schematic representation of an equivalent lever system. Calculate the force exerted by the upper leg muscle, aka the quadricep, to lift the mass at a constant speed. Explicitly show blah blah. All right, uh, so here's the picture. Here's the quadriceps muscle. Uh, it's going to be acting on the uh, tibial tuberosity. It's going to serve to produce a torque that will rotate the lower leg on up. Okay, and uh, here is now a diagram. Here's the rigid uh, lever. Here is the pivot point. The force of the muscle is acting here. And here is the tension of the weight. Okay, or the tension in the cable, I should say, being produced exactly, being produced uh, explicitly by the weight of the object being lifted. Okay, so uh, it tells us constant speed, therefore there is no acceleration. Right? And I know then that the sum of the torques in this problem will equal zero. Okay, how many torques are there? Well, there's two. Why? Because there are two forces acting at a distance from the pivot point. So they both have a lever arm distance and a force value. So the force of the muscles producing a torque, and if this were to act, it would rotate this about the pivot in a counterclockwise direction, therefore it's positive. So I should say the torque produced by the muscle is positive, and the opposite would be the case for the torque produced by the tension in the cable, which is being produced by the weight of the object. That's going to be clockwise. So therefore, minus the torque produced by the weight, I'll say, will equal zero. And therefore, the torque of the muscle will equal the torque being produced by the weight. Expanding on these now, we all, you know, we, we see that all of the angles here in reference to the a lever arm and the force, they're all 90, so I'm, they're all perpendicular, so I can just get rid of this value, right? Sine of theta, sine of 90 is, is a one, and therefore I can just disregard that. So when I now substitute that on into my equation, I have the lever arm for the muscle multiplied by the force the muscle is producing will equal the lever arm of the tension or the weight multiplied by the force of that tension. So to find the force of the muscle, we just simply divide by the uh, lever arm of the muscle across both sides, so we would come up with an equation like so. Okay, all we have to do now is plug in the values. So uh, the lever arm for the tension is going to be the distance between where that tension is acting and the uh, axis of rotation. They told us 35 centimeters. We don't have to convert this into meters, but I'm going to anyway, just because I don't like to uh, remember when I can and when I can't. I just say, well, let me just convert it all the time to meters. You can always be safe that way. Then the uh, force, you know, the uh, force that is, or I should say, then the tension that is being produced, which is exactly equal to the weight of the object. I can write it now as 10 times 9.8. And then all divided now by the lever arm uh, of the muscle, which is the distance between the axis of rotation and the line of action of the force of the quadriceps muscle. They told us it was two centimeters. Converting that into meters, it's 0.02. Plugging this all into your handy dandy calculator, now it becomes 0.35 times 10 times 9.8, all divided by 0.02. And we get a value considering sig figs here, probably two sig figs, so 1.7 times 10 to the third newtons. That will be the force that the quadriceps produces. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this video helped. If it did, give us a hand. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. Tell anybody and everybody you want. Uh, it'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, and I hope you have a great day.